Good morning, everyone. I have another video. Okay, so I had a woman ask me, how do you make a smooth background? Well, there's actually a few ways of doing that. So I'm just gonna show you uh, a couple of those. So what I'm gonna do is take my pouncer and I got a little bit of ink on there. I might put a little more just for fun so you can see how it works. Okay, I don't throw these uh, felts away until they get really full of different colors. And even there, <laughs> you really don't have to throw them away. But anyway, I'm putting alcohol on there and I wanna tell you, I'm in a well-ventilated area. Anyway, I'm just gonna show you how I do this. So I get it all juiced up and now I'm just gonna smear. And look, at I got a few colors on there, who knew? But it doesn't matter, cause I'm just showing you how this, because it's juicy enough and I actually could use more, really get it sopping. Because when you do, you can see how it's softening, but, and these make great skies. And I'm not gonna make a big sky. Well, maybe I'll give it a feeling of a little sky. <laughs> but even though there's texture, it'll fade. So if you know that you're gonna be making um, some, let's say a landscape or something, and you're smearing it all over. So you got that, it doesn't matter because it's gonna turn into trees and bushes and whatever. The other thing you can do, I'm gonna turn this over. You can see how it fades and softens down. So when you do a, a something in front, it comes forward and it pops out. The other thing I wanted to show you was, you can take a little alcohol, put it in some blue. I'm using a pipette. I'm gonna stir it around a little bit so it gets nice and juicy and mixed. I'm gonna put a little more alcohol in it. I want this pretty fluid. Now I'm gonna absorb it. And pour it on my picture. Now I can play around this way. I can smooth it with the pipette. You can use anything. You can move it this way and that way. And that's how you get another smooth texture. So you can see how that works. You can use a brush, the back of a brush and move it. So you're, but the, the fluidity of the ink is what makes it so you can make a nice thin background. Now, if you're doing a landscape, you actually want the top of the area to be darker than the bottom. So just turn it and it makes these beautiful mocks looks almost like a, like a landscape in itself. And like my fan, being that I have my fan going on, it really helps me dry it. And, uh, and plus it's good for your, uh, you know, for, for ventilation. So that's how you do that. Let's let that sit a minute and then I'm gonna do a, a quick painting just so you can see how it works. So I'm gonna go into some black and I'm just gonna split a line. Now my black is a little juicier than I should have had. Not a big deal, no panic. Just come back with thicker ink, turn it and have it pull towards yourself. Like I say, I'm not really Working very hard at this, but I wanted to give you the idea of how the uh, effect would be. And now I'm gonna turn it back around and work on my tree. Now there's hardly any ink on my brush, so now I'll make little squiggle marks and it makes perfect branches. See that? Don't work so hard. I know you all work so hard to get that perfect little branch. Don't do that. Make a mess. You'll make prettier branches. This time I have dark again, so I'm just gonna bring it out a little bit where I know I want some darker little branches. Bring branches into your space too. Don't always have them always going off the side. Bring some into your space like that. Do you see how it comes forward? A lot more interesting, don't you think? And cross over these lines. Do you see when you cross over the line, it connects things up. And now I got less on my brush, so now I'm gonna make some more of those little wiggly squigglies. Make the squiggles, you love it. Look how beautiful that looks already. 
And like I said, I'm just doing silhouette today. You can use any color. You could use greens, you can use black, you, anything as long as it's dark. And I'm gonna bring that down. Work on my trunk. So here we go, little squigglies, there's less on my brush. Look how that comes out into my space now, not just wherever. I'm directing you how to look. So pay attention to how much ink is on your brush and use it where you need it at that point in time, rather than like uh, always reloading all the time. It's like, okay, well, I need a lighter here to make it look like these are behind, or I need a darker here, and now I'll save that for the beginning. Make a little root. Okay, so I'm gonna go into a little green and it's a little, it looks like a little landscape back there, doesn't it? Like there might be a lake or something, I don't know. So let's put another uh, scribble. And then uh, just put some alcohol and let us dance in the background. And it's pretty juicy, so I'm getting a nice effect. I want a DACA here so it brings you into this tree. You see how I'm using like an armature? I'm saying, okay, I want you to look this way. I want you to look here. So I use uh, little tricks. And you see how it smooths out when it gets a lot of alcohol? Now I'll scribble right behind there. That's fine. I got enough green on my brush, but yet it's soft. and breaks up some of that red. Okay, so let's see. What else can I make this beautiful? I'll just put some more docks in here because I really want it silhouette-y. You know, let's make this tree really dramatic. So I, I'm gonna make a little more green here. I'm using a lot of alcohol again, because I wanna make it flow. So that worked out pretty nice, I think. All right, so um, this looks pretty interesting back here it's light so what I want to do is put some alcohol and let it fade and I want it to go back and forth so I'm just gonna let it try to fade a little bit here and I'm gonna blot off the crust because I don't want this straight across I want it to be a little a little more design to it okay now I'm just gonna tickle that back and forth. Maybe put some trees in the background. Right, right there, I see a tree. Let's take advantage of it. So if you make a little cluster of trees like that, all you have to do is come back in, throw little points on the top and you have an automatic bunch of trees. but you need some tall ones, some low ones. Make it interesting. Soften that edge. Pretty interesting, huh? We'll make it believe there's a little something there, who knows. Let's make this tree be really interesting. I wanna make the branch be ridiculously long. And now I can work on this tree a little more. Maybe bring it down and now there's less on my brush so I can squiggle more branches. Not all branches are long, make little dots. Look how pretty that is. Take advantage to less on my brush. And that's how you make one of those trees with lots of branches without any leaves. And do you see how they 
because the background is one flat kind of a color with, you know, variations, it makes it very interesting and desirable. And let's uh, break that line up a little bit. Anytime I see a big line, I always wonder where can I break it up? Where can I make it a little bit, instead of taking this off, put it out in front. Think about things coming out in front. I think that's uh, so interesting. And just soften some of the edges and scribble. Scribble at, so important. I did a lot of videos on that. Um, they're so much fun to do. And you learn to see things that you didn't even know were there. Do you see how this is growing and looking so much better? Okay, so let's uh, adjust the foreground a little bit. Let's not get too carried away. Bring my line back in. So you come in in this direction, you're coming in this direction. Maybe put a little dock at the bottom and kind of scribble around. Scribble, scribble. Using more alcohol again and getting that blended feel again. I guess that you could call this a blended technique with fluid ink and alcohol. Here we go, so pretty. Lighten it up here and there. But I want this to look like it brings you in. That's important to me. So this needs to be dark here and here and fade away. Dark in here. And fade away. But what am I doing? I'm pointing you to where I want you to look. This is my center of interest. And I'm just fluid. Let the fluid run. Bring that right into the tree. If it's too fluid, it'll break your tree up. So make sure your brush doesn't have too much on there. That looks pretty nice. If you notice your tree got too much darkness or too much light, you know, just tap on it and re reload and goof around and you'll regain your control. Let's put this one in front. How interesting is that compared to just leaving it on the edge. Get a little bit more line work. You know, don't try to be perfect with your branches. Um, they're not perfect at all. They, they go every which way. That was a little juicy. So I might take that down here. Do you see how this line brings you right in and right in here and right down into here? People don't notice that. They just think it's a pretty picture. Okay, so I'm just gonna break this line up a little bit. Now I wanna add some, uh, some color, sienna, cause it's a pop of color, I'll tell you that right now. One of my favorite new colors. It's very red and very deserty. So I'm just gonna put it on fluidity wise. <laughs> Because it's so fluid, I get a smooth look. And look, where do you look? Boom, you're going right there. So let's put a little of this up into the tree a little bit. Let's bring this tree forward a little bit over here, the branch. You can always go back and forth and play, but you gotta have something to play into. Anyway, you know me, I can't leave it alone. Keep playing. Okay, so that's how you use a fluid technique. Um, of course, you can put a lot more time in it and make it look really something super duper, but I just wanted to get a quick one done for you. And so you see kind of my thought process. Break that up. Anywhere I see anything a lot of the same, I break it up. There's a line for that line of sight. I'm breaking it up. And that works good. 
One thing I need, what do I need? Everybody that watches me knows I need some birds. I like to have the birds fly in the direction of my center of interest. Maybe I'll put one on the branch. Some people will notice it, not all, but it doesn't matter. I like it. And then I'm gonna put a little more of a branch. It almost looks like another bird. I'll reinforce it. It isn't always done in one shot. I can see a lot of paintings out there. You get the great ideas. You're doing you're doing a great job, but you just need to do it again with another layer. And let's bring one more coming over to our spot. Just to kind of, but I want to cross over this a little bit. So it pushes that back. So what does that, that pushes my trees back a little. I'll make it bigger even. See how I can change my mind? You've got to understand how wings work. Once you understand how the wings are are on a bird, you'll make more convincing birds. So just really check out the anatomy a little bit. Okay, there you go. Put a little highlight here with a wet brush. Boop, too juicy. I'm rushing. But that's good because you see how I fix things. So I'm never panic. I can always fix it. And if you have your handy dandy lifting pen, just get it done and get it over with. Put a little light in it. You can also use your brush. I'm just doing this because of time. Big trick is wipe it out. I know Chameleon makes a great pen. Consider that. Putting a little highlight on his little head. Brings attention to them a little bit. So anyway, this brings you over to here. I got your lines of sight coming in. And I think that's a pretty nice picture. So that's just basically to show you how to do a floating background, add a floating foreground, how to texturize it afterward. And I would still work on this for another hour, but I think that's, you get the point. That's how you float, and that's how you get that nice soft look. Look how dimensional it gets when you do use a floated background. So if you're looking for more dimension, consider this particular technique. I want another bird because it's boring over here. Let's make one, you know, they like friends, so I gotta make a few more. There you go, good enough, all right. And there's three, things work nice in threes. Okay, until next time, happy painting.